from their recess to consider the health care reconciliation bill. This is one of two health care bills the House is considering. One passed by the Senate in December and a second, the reconciliation bill, making changes to that Senate bill. This is live coverage on C-SPAN 2. Rules Committee will please come to order. I will call up an amendment by the uh, Energy and Commerce Committee. Well. No, I won't. The chair will uh, receive a motion, Mr. McGovern. Madam Chair, I I, <laughs> I, I, I move that the committee join the club. I move that the committee report a single rule for consideration of the Senate amendments to HR 3590, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, and the and HR 4872, the Reconciliation Act of 2010. The rule provides for two hours of debate on the topic of the Senate amendments and the topic of H.R. 4872 equally divided and controlled by the majority leader, the minority leader, or their designees. Upon completion of such debate with respect to the Senate amendments to H.R. 3590, the rule makes an order a motion offered by the majority leader or a designee that the House concur in the Senate amendments. The motion shall be in order without intervention of any point of order except those arising under Clause 10 of Rule 21. The Senate amendment and the motion shall be considered as read. If the motion to concur in the Senate amendments is adopted, the resolution provides for consideration of <coughs> H.R. 4872 under a closed rule. The rule waives all points of order against consideration of H.R. 4872, except those arising under Clause 10 of Rule 21. It provides that the amendment in the nature of a substitute printed in Part A of the Rules Committee report accompanying the resolution modified by the amendment printed in Part B of the Rules Committee report shall be considered as adopted and the bill as amended, as amended shall be considered as read. The rule waives all points of order against H.R. 4872 as amended. The rule provides one motion to recommit H.R. 4872 with or without instructions. Until completion of proceedings enabled by the first three sections of this resolution, A, the Chair may decline to entertain enter, en, en, any intervening motion except as expressly provided herein, Resolution, question, or notice. B, the chair may decline to entertain the question of consideration. C, the chair may postpone such proceedings to such time as may be designated by the speaker. D, the second sentence of Clause uh, 1A of Rule um, 19. 19 shall not apply. And E, any proposition admissible under the first three sections of this resolution shall be considered as read. Finally, the rule directs the clerk in the engrossment of H.R. 4872 to amend the title to read, quote, an act to provide for reconciliation pursuant uh, to Title II of, of the concurrent resolution on the budget for fiscal year 2010, <coughs> SCON Res 13, end quote. Thank you very much, Mr. McGovern. We've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Breyer. Madam Chair. Thank you very much. And uh, we've had a very long day. Uh, what did we end up, seven or eight hours uh, of uh, hearing today? and. Lots of action on the floor, and let me. Uh, I know I. I know I. Ref excuse me. Ten hours here. <clears throat> Twelve hours. <clears throat> Twelve hours. Well, why don't we say thirty-six hours or something like that? We've well, been why here. Why don't we uh, say twelve? It's yeah, it's been here for. We've been here for a very, very long time, and uh, you know, it was interesting that earlier today I reminded uh, our colleagues of the document, a new direction for America, and I, I read uh, the paragraph in here about the call by uh, then Minority Leader Pelosi for an open process when it comes to debate and all. And then I read the paragraph that said, uh, and this was Nancy Pelosi's commitment that she made as she was campaigning to win the majority. One of the promises was members should have at least 24 hours to examine bills and conference reports, uh, the text prior to floor consideration, rules governing floor debate, must be reported before 10 p.m. for a bill to be considered the following day. Now, let me, uh, so obviously we've blown that one out the window tonight. Let me just say, <clears throat> let me just, uh, shall I read it again? It says reported before 10 p.m. Reported before 10 p.m. I don't think that that's going to happen. Let me say that uh, it is somewhat unorthodox as I look at the, uh, at the resolution itself that's before us. We're not debating any legislation. We're debating topics. Mm -hmm. 
Upon adoption of this resolution, it should be in order to debate the topics addressed by the Senate amendments, and then we will have consideration of the measures. And I wondered if you could explain to us, Madam Chair, why it is that we're debating topics here as opposed to the legislation that is going to be placed before us. Actually, the two hours of debate is on the legislation. I think. Uh, no, it says debate on the topics. I, I don't addressed. know why the word topics is used because we obviously will be talking about legislation. Okay. Okay. Well, it's it, it is somewhat unorthodox for us to be doing that, and well, uh, I'll just um, right. let that stand and and say, uh, you know, this this call that <clears throat> Ms. Pelosi made when she was uh, seeking an opportunity to emerge uh, in the majority was that we would have an open debate. And so I'm going to give every member of this committee an opportunity to allow for the kind of free flow and open debate that Ms. Pelosi promised us that we would have when she authored a new direction for America. So I move that we uh, allow uh, these measures to be considered under an open amendment process, H.R. 4872 and H.R. 3590. Thank you, Mr. Dreyer. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? Mr. Cardoza. Yes, Madam Chair. I, I consider this, since we were not able to deal with this legislation, the traditional processes, uh, uh, because Mr. Uh, uh, Wayne, uh, thank you, uh, suggested that there was not going to be any conference since they denied us the ability to go to conference. I'm going to treat this as a conference report. I just want to say that directly and, and uh, uh, I feel that uh, the way we're handling this is absolutely appropriate tonight. Uh, I, there's a lot of uh, the proposed amendments that are going to be offered tonight that I could support, in fact, that I do support. But I'm not going to support them here because it's a carefully crafted agreement between the House and the Senate. Unfortunately, this, um, we couldn't do this in the traditional processes, but um, I think that we will move forward in the future trying to do some of the things that are suggested here today, which we could have done in conference had the Senate agreed to go to conference. Uh, any other discussion? Ma Madam Chair. Ms. Fox? Could I ask a question? Did the Senate even attempt to go to conference? Yes, they did. They did? Yes, they did. Thank you. Uh, and as we all know, the conference reports uh, are not amendable. Well, but we uh, are Madam Chair, let me, let me follow say. up. How could they have attempted to go to conference since they didn't pass the same bill? In the Senate? It, it, yeah, they, they didn't do well, both. They, they, you often go to conference on different bills. The right. Senate and House bills go to conference right. so they can be reconciled into a single bill. Let me just right. say, Madam Chair, uh, if you, you, an attempt can be made to describe this as a conference report because under the Constitution, the Senate did, in fact, exercise its rights to take the action that they did. And that, to me, is <clears throat> if, if this were a standard conference report, we wouldn't be offering the amendments that we're going to offer this evening. And so I think that the recognition that this is not a conference report, it can be treated like a conference report if someone chooses to do that, but it's not a conference report. And for that reason, I believe that we should have an open rule for the consideration of the amendments. And Madam Chair, I will say that, as, you, as I've told you privately, we're going to be having votes on the amendments this evening. We will have no more no more votes at all this evening if we simply adopt my amendment for an open rule. That assures you that everyone can go home and we won't have to be, have this protracted debate and no more recorded votes. In fact, we don't even need a recorded vote on this, Madam Chair. Wow. We can buy a voice vote. We can buy a voice vote, move to have an open amendment process, and then we can all say good luck and good night. Madam, we'll see everyone tomorrow morning. Madam Chair. Does everybody feel like they need to put their yeah. hand in the pocket and make sure their wallet's there? <laughs> <laughs> My hands are up here, Madam Chair. Well, you know what? The American people, the American people are all doing that as they look at this legislation because one trillion dollars is a hell of a lot of money. Madam so, Chair. Uh, Mr. McGuff. Yeah. Uh, let's be clear. Um, if we were to adopt these amendments, um, it would mean that the Senate would be able to filibuster this. A, a measure so we, we, they wouldn't even have a vote on health care. We've been talking about health care reform. I think the majority of Americans want health care reform. We have been denied the right to even be able to vote on health care reform because of the obstructionism of the Republican leadership in the Senate. The Republican leadership has used every single parliamentary move and manipulation and procedure to try to derail this. So, you know, 
I'm happy to be here all night. Would the gentleman yield? I'm happy to be here all night. Yield? I'm happy to be here all night and vote on your amendments, Mr. Would the, Dreyer. Would the gentleman yield? Yes, I yield to the Let gentleman. me just say that uh, every single amendment that we are going to be offering this evening is to the reconciliation well, bill. And so it is not in any way well, do what the I will, I will, I will, just said. I will reclaim my time. The amendments I will, I will, to the I will restate. I, I reclaim my time. Not to the Senate. I will, I, will, I will restate. This is an attempt to try to derail this legislation. We have, we, this should be treated as a Congress report. Uh, because the Republicans chose not to participate and try to derail this, there is a carefully negotiated agreement between the House and the Senate. We need to move on this. We can have a vote and finally be able to give the American people uh, health insurance reform, which they've been lo longing for for decades. And I'm we, we all share, and Madam we'll Chair, Madam it. Chair, let me just say we all share that goal and we can have the kind of debate and get exactly where I believe both political parties want to be, and that is meaningful, meaningful reform to ensure that Americans will have access to affordable health insurance. And I believe that having an open rule will, in fact, give us that chance. So I encourage my uh, colleagues to And I don't think both parties hard. agree on that, Madam Chair. Oh, hardly. Let's begin the voting. I will call the vote on the motion by Mr. Dreyer. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 Okay, the chair Madam Chairman, no we have a recorded Roll vote. Call, please. No. 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 Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. No. Rep. reports totals. The motion is not agreed to. Any more further motions? Mr. Dreyer. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I move to amend the rule to provide that for any record vote demanded on passage of H.R. 4872, the speaker, the speaker shall use her authority pursuant to Clause 3 of Rule 26 to direct the clerk to conduct such a vote by a call of the roll. Now, this is something that is done at the beginning of every Congress. We've all gone through this when we've had the election of the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And everyone is recognizing what a monumental vote this is, how extraordinarily important it is. And so this amendment would simply state that when we go to a recorded vote on passage of this legislation, we would have the clerk call the roll of the members. And I believe that it's a common sense way for us to deal with the issue of accountability and transparency, which everyone likes to talk about around here. For the gentleman's motion, any discussion? Madam Chair, can I ask a question? Mr. McGovern, you may. When, when I vote, I, I usually take my card and I put it in mm -hmm. the machine and I press As yes or no, and, and then it lights up McGovern, yes or no. Right. So, I mean, the issue of transparency. It's pretty transparent. I, okay, I, 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 thank you very much. Madam Chair. Any other discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Let me say that the right to, or the opportunity to simply put a card in and leave the House chain is un American. Is that what you're getting at? Um, let me see. What was so the point? idea of putting a what, no, no, no. You've asked, no, I got to think about your question. Well, I really want You've to now ask asked me if I believe it's un American. Party. You, you've asked me if I it believe it to, to be, be the trend of the conversation here. That I believe that it's un-American to that you use your that voting only a roll card. Call vote is really valid. Is that no, correct? I don't think that only a roll call vote is valid. You want what both? I believe is no, Madam Chair. I don't want both. I'll, let me re-offer re, uh, the amendment. What I have what I have said, Madam Chair, is that okay. if we are to make this amendment in order, it would simply say that when we get to the vote on passage, that each member of the House of Representatives would, when their name is called by the clerk, simply stand as we do at the opening of each Congress when we have the vote for speaker and state whether they are voting yes or no when the clerk would call the roll. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Is there any discussion? Mr. Perlmutter. I want to say vote. We put our card in the slot is a recorded vote for all time, and I think that's going to be sufficient. So I'm going to vote no against this amendment. Any other discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion. Mr. Dreyer, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Any no. chair of the no's have, have a record it? vote, Madam Chair? Yes, indeed. Record vote, please. No. Mr. Hastings. No. No. Mr. Carey. No. Mr. Perlmutter. No. Mr. Payne. No. Mr. Holt. No. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. No. Motion is not agreed.
agreed to. Are there further motions? Yes, Madam Chair. I have Mr. an amendment Dreyer. to rule. Uh, I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 53 offered by Mr. Barton, which would prevent this bill from taking effect until the Office of Management and Budget certifies that the federal budget deficit has been eliminated. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Is there any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion by Mr. Growl. In favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Do the chair the no. have a record vote, Madam Chair? Vote, please. No. Mr. Hastings, no. Mr. Spotsilla. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Perry. No. Mr. Perlmutter. No. Mr. Paul. No. Mr. Paul. No. Mr. Growl. Aye. Is not agreed to. Further motion? Yes, Madam Chair. Mr. I have an amendment to the rule. I move that we uh, make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for Amendment Number 55, which has been offered by uh, our colleague from Illinois, Mr. Shimkus, which would require a certification that the bill would lower national health costs. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? Not the vote will occur on the motion by Mr. Dryer. In favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Gave the chair. The noes have it. We have a record vote, Madam record Chair. Vote, please. No. 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 Yes, Madam Chair. Um, I have a member of the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for Amendment Number 68 offered by Mr. Barton, which would strike all new taxes in the bill. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. no. In the chair, the no's. We have a record vote, Madam Chair. Record vote, please. No. 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 Mr. Cardoza. No. Mr. Archer. No. Mr. Perlmutter. No. Ms. Pinger. No. Mr. Paul. No. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Diaz-Water. Yes. Mr. Session. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Madam Chair. No. Clerk reports a total. Not agreed to for the motion. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, I have a member of the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 48 offered by Mr. Barton of Texas and Mr. John Sam Johnson of Texas, which would remove the provision which provides the extra funds for Louisiana's Medicaid program. This is known as the Louisiana Purchase, and uh, we will have an opportunity to strike that if we uh, make this amendment in order, and I encourage my colleagues to support it. Heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion by Mr. Dreyer. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 Any the chair, chair, the noes have it. Recorded vote, please. <clears throat> no. Mr. Hastings. No. Mr. Matsu. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Arcuri. No. Mr. Perlmutter. No. Mr. Hanger. No. Mr. Paul. No. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Diaz-Water. Yes. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. No. Clerk reports a total. Four days, nine days. Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Dreyer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I move that the committee make an order to provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 49 offered by uh, Messrs. Barton of Texas and Mr. Johnson of Texas, which would remove the provision which provides funds for a medical facility in Connecticut. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Is there any discussion, any questions? If not, the vote will occur on the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 Record chair, vote, Madam Chair. Record vote, please. No. 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 Mr. No. Mr. Perlman. No. Ms. Payne. No. Mr. Paul. No. Mr. Drive. Aye. Yes. Mr. Sessions. Aye. 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 No. Madam Chair. Motions, Mr. Dreyer. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 50 offered by Messrs. Barton and Johnson, which would remove the provision that would allow certain hospitals to benefit from Section 508 if it means higher Medicare payments. You've heard the motion. Is there any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Gave no. the chair the no. We have a record vote, Madam record Chair. Vote, please. No. Mr. Hayes. No. Mr. Matsu. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Arcuri. No. Mr. Perlman. No. Mr. Hayes. No. Mr. Paulus. No. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Diaz-Water. Yes. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Madam Chair. No. Credit report totals. Four days, nine. Motion is not agreed to. Further motion.
Moses. Thank you, Madam Aye. Chair. I move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for Amendment Number 54, offered by Messrs. Barton and Johnson, which would remove the provision that provides for increased Medicare payments to hospitals and doctors in frontier states. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? Not the vote occurs on the motion by Mr. Dreyer. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 Being the chair, the no's have it. Record vote, Madam Chair. Record vote, please. Mr. McDonald, no. Mr. Hayes, no. no. Ms. Matsu, no. Mr. Cardo, no. Mr. Arcuri, no. Mr. Cromer, no. Ms. Kanger, no. Mr. Cole, no. Mr. Dreyer, aye. Yes. Aye. 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 No. Motion is not agreed to, Mr. Dreyer. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for Amendment Number 70, offered by <laughs> Messrs. Barton and Johnson, which would repeal a provision providing Medicare coverage to certain individuals exposed to environmental health hazards. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Is there any discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion by Mr. Dreyer. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 Chair, vote, the Madam Chair, have it. Record vote, please. Mr. Gov, no. Mr. Hayes, 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 no. Mr.
Thank you, Madam Chair. I have an amendment to the rule. I move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 82 offered by Representative Brown Waite of Florida, which would eliminate any cuts to Medicare in the bill. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion by Mr. Diaz Ballard. All in favor say aye. 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 No. Can no. chair the no's have? Record a vote, please. Recorded vote. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Ms. Matsu. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Ms. Garcia. No. Mr. Fulmer. No. Ms. Painter. No. Mr. Paul. No. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Diaz Ballard. Yes. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Madam Chair. No. Clerk reports the totals. Motion is not agreed to, Mr. Diaz Ballard. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for Amendment Number 91, offered by Representative Cassidy of Louisiana, which would clarify that high deductible health plans with an HSA meet the definition of adequate coverage. Furthermore, any new standards adopted by the Secretary shall not apply to high deductible health plans and health savings accounts if such standards would have the effect of disqualifying such plans from meeting the essential benefit package requirements. Thank you, Mr. Diaz Ballard. Any discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion by a gentleman from Florida. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Can you chair the no's hat? Record a vote, please. Vote. No. 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 Aye. 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 No. Clerk report the total. The motion is not agreed to. Mr. Diaz Ballard. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the uh, committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number three, offered by Representative Cole of Oklahoma, which would require that savings resulting from spending reductions in Medicare stay in Medicare to pay down long-term unfunded financial obligations. Heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? Not the vote will occur on the motion by Mr. Diaz Ballard. All in favor say aye. 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 No. No. Can you chair the no's hand? Recorded vote, please. Recorded vote, please. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Ms. Matsu. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Arcuri. No. Mr. Cromer. No. Ms. Painter. No. Mr. Falls. No. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Diaz Ballard. Yes. Mr. Session. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. No. Clerk report the totals. Four yeas, nine. Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Diaz Ballard. Thank you. I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 32 offered by Representative Rogers of Michigan, which would express the sense of Congress that any new Social Security pay payroll tax revenue that results from this legislation can only be used for future Social Security benefit payments. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Is there any discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 Can you chair the no's hat? Recorded vote, please. Recorded vote, please. No. 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 Thank you. Motion is not agreed to, Mr. Diaz Ballard. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have an amendment to the rule. I move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 43, offered by Representative Franks of Arizona, which would prohibit cuts to Medicare Advantage plans. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Is there any discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion. All in favor will say aye. 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 Those no. 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 You hear the chair, the no's hand. Recorded vote, please. Recorded vote. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Mr. Matsu. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Arcuri. No. Mr. Perlman. No. Mr. Painter. No. Mr. Falls. No. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Diaz and Water. Yes. Mr. Session. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Madam Chair. No. Clerk will report the total. 48. 9 minutes. Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Diaz Ballard. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have an amendment to the rule. I move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 73 offered by Representative Rogers of Michigan, which would require there to be no changes to Medicare Advantage for a given year until the HHS Secretary certifies that no senior will be forced away from or lose their enrollment in the MA plan, Medicare Advantage plan that they were enrolled on as of the day before enactment of the bill. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Is there any discussion? Any questions? If not, the vote will occur on the motion. All in favor will say aye. 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 No. 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 And the chair, the no's hand. Court of vote, please. Court of vote. Mr. Hastings. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Arcuri. No. Mr. Fowler. No. Mr. Painter. No. Mr. Fal
Not to, Mr. Madam Chair, I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 45 op offered by Representatives Herger of California, Bustani of Louisiana, and Brown of Georgia, which would, would prohibit CMS from making coverage determinations using comparative effectiveness research solely on the basis of cost. Refer the gentleman's motion. Uh, any discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion by the gentleman. All in favor will say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Be no. the chair, the no. Sign. Recorded Mr. vote, please. Recorded vote, sorry. Recorded vote, please. No. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Ms. Monsoon. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Arquette. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Arquette. No. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Arquette. No. No. Mr. Painters. No. Mr. Paulus. No. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Diaz-Water. Yes. Mr. Session. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Madam Chair. No. Clerk reports are told. Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Diaz Ballard. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 19, offered by Representative Burgess of Texas, which would require that to have a qualified state plan under the Medicaid program, states must provide at least 75% of the payment rate paid to a provider under the state employees plan or the federal employees health benefit plan, uh, most chosen by families. For dental and vision services, in the case where such services are covered under a state employee plan, providers must be paid at least 75% of the rate paid under that plan. In the case where supplemental dental and vision services are not offered to a state employee providers, to a state employee providers must be paid at a rate of 75% of the rate paid by the supplemental vision and dental federal employees health benefit plan, most chosen, most often chosen by families. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Uh, any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion. All in favor will say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. no. Aye. Any chair, the no's hand. Recorded vote, please. Recorded vote. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Mr. Monsoon. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Arquette. No. Mr. Perlman. No. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Diaz-Water. No. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Diaz-Water. Yes. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. No. Clerk reports the totals. Motion is not agreed to, Mr. Diaz. Ballard. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have an amendment to the rule. I move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 20, offered by Representative Burgess of Texas, which would establish a utilization review and appeals process for qualified health plans. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Is there any discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion by Mr. Diaz Ballard. All in favor will say aye. 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 Those opposed will no. say no. no. Okay, the chair, the no's hand. Court vote, please. Recorded vote. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Mr. Matsu. No. Mr. Cardozo. No. Mr. Arquette. No. Mr. Perlman. No. Mr. Painter. No. Mr. Polis. No. no. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Diaz-Water. Yes. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Madam Chair. No. Clerk reports the totals. Most is not agreed to. Yes, Thank you, Madam Chair. I have an amendment to the rule. I move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 79 offered by Representative Terry of Nebraska, which would strike Medicare payment cuts to disproportionate share hospitals. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Is there any discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion by Mr. Diaz Ballard. All in favor will say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 In the chair, the no's hand. Recorded vote, please. Recorded vote. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Mr. Matsu. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Arquette. No. Mr. Brown. No. Mr. Painter. No. Paulus. No. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Diaz-Water. Yes. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Madam Chair. No. Clerk reports the totals. 48 is not. Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Diaz-Battle. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have an amendment to the rule. I move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 52, offered by Representative Terry of Nebraska, which would strike market basket update reductions. For the gentleman's motion, any discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose no. 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 The chair of the no's have it. Recorded vote, please. Recorded vote. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Mr. Fargo. No. Mr. Arquette. No. Mr. Perlman. No. Mr. Painter. No. Mr. Polis. No. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Diaz-Water. Yes. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Madam Chair. 
No. Clerk report the total. The motion is not agreed to. Mr. Piaz Ballard. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have an amendment to the rule. I move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 78, offered by <coughs> Representative Upton of Michigan, which would prohibit the bill from taking effect until the Medicare trustees publish projections that show that Medicare is solvent for the next 30 years. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Is there any discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion of the gentleman. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 Okay, in the chair, the no's have. Recorded vote, please. Recorded vote, please. Mr. Governor, no. Please. No. Spotsilla. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Arcari. No. Perlmutter. No. Mr. Payne. No. Mr. Polk. No. Mr. Grimm. Aye. Mr. Diaz Blood. Yes. Mr. Session. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Madam Chair. No. Clerk reports the total. 40 A's, 9 A's. Motion is not agreed to, Mr. Diaz Ballard. Madam Chair, I have an amendment to the rule. I move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 56, offered by Representative Whitfield of Kentucky, which would remove the prompt pay discount from the Medicare Part B reimbursement formula. Heard the gentleman's motion. Is there any discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion. <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 In the chair, the no's have Recorded it. vote, please. Recorded vote. No. 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 Offered by Representative Whitfield of Kentucky, which would place a moratorium on the cuts to reimbursement for a procedure performed by interventional pain physicians. You've heard the motion. Any discussion? I didn't, I did you did not hear the motion. Representative Whitfield of Kentucky. Ed Whitfield. I don't believe he tested. Believe he. We can probably reopen it and get him up here if you'd like, Mr. Chair. I mean, I call him. Any other discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 In the chair, the no's have. Record a vote, please. Record a vote, please. Mr. No. 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 Cardo. No. Mr. Arcari. No. Mr. No. Mr. No. No. Mr. Aye. Mr. Yes. No. Clerk report the totals. Motion is not agreed to, Mr. Diaz Ballard. Thank you. I have an amendment to the rule, Madam Chair. I move the committee make an order <coughs> and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 41, offered by Representatives Loomis of Wyoming and Sam Johnson of Texas, which would allow states to opt out of any provisions of the bill to the extent that they mandate the purchasing of health insurance by residents of such state, mandate the provision of health insurance by employers in such state or interfere with the ability of patients to privately contract with medical providers and insurers under the laws of such state. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? Did, Mr. McGovern. Did they testify? I think they did. I don't think they did. I don't, I don't think they did. I don't know. No, they did. I just was curious how strongly they felt about it. I don't know. Any other discussion? If not, they they, uh, if not, the vote will occur on the motion by Mr. Diaz Ballard. All in favor say aye. 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 No. 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 Be in the chair, the no's have it. Uh, recorded vote, please. Vote. No. 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 Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Diaz Ballard. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have, to, I have an amendment to the rule. I move <laughs> that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for substitute amendment number 95 offered by Representative East Isa of California, which would strike all after the enacting clause and insert language that would allow every American to obtain uh, the same health insurance that members of Congress have by using the existing framework of the Federal Employees Health Benefits Plan. The Office of Personnel Management would contract with insurance providers to make private health insurance plans available to all Americans. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? Yeah, he should, did, did he testify? No, no. 
I don't know, but I remember yeah. uh, you making an order of no, I'm just Representative curious. Rangel uh, no, amendments no, when I, he would come up here. He, when he wouldn't even no, come up here. I mean, you know, it's happened, but I don't he, know if they came up or not, but it's it's There's plenty of precedent if they did not come no, up. Well, I'm just curious. And I hope I, that you make it an order. I, I'm just curious. They want to know how strongly they felt about it. That's all. Oh, he did not did not. He did not they feel very strongly about it. Okay, thank you. This amendment. This amendment. A lot of other uh, people. That, 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 a lot of other that, people. Uh, all Americans should have the ability. Me, Madam Chair. I have the time. Reporter, oh the reporter. I have, no, I have the time. me, gentlemen. The, the, the reporter cannot possibly have I an accurate I have record. The time. No, I'm no, not no, suggesting no, you do no, not. No, I'm just saying talking over each other, she can't hear what wasn't you're doing. Wasn't the talking over? I'm sorry. Uh, when you finished Hastings. reading your motion, I asked for questions, Mr. McGovern. Yeah, and I asked whether or not he had testified. Mr. McGovern controls the time. And, and I don't know, because I wasn't here throughout the entire 10 hours, if Mr. Well, Issa was here. But I know there's I, plenty of press. I, re I reclaim no, my time. Plenty of press. I reclaim my time. This is my time. I was here for the entire 10 hours. He did not testify. I just was curious. Well, how strongly he felt about it. I, uh, there's plenty of precedent. Oh, I'm, I'm just, that, just a question. That, you know. Madam Chair, are we yes. still at the stages of discussion? discussion? Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, uh, if I may ask, and I uh, uh, would ask uh, unanimous consent to include the statement of administration policy. I don't believe that we had put that in the record Without earlier. Without objection, so ordered. Earlier uh, today. And also unanimous consent to include the uh, number 25, uh, uh, Sullivan uh, uh, statement. All right. Now, Madam Chair, no I, I was keeping a log and uh, to undergird uh, what Mr. Govan uh, was uh, speaking about, so is how the American public uh, will understand a little bit about our process. Um, uh, when a call is made for a rule, uh, an agenda is established. In this agenda, which um, has in it um, uh, uh, close to 40 of our distinguished colleagues who are listed, um, and a significant number of them did come here and testify uh, beginning at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, uh, this morning. Some of the amendments as offered, and let me make it very clear, my colleague from Florida is correct. There is abundant precedent uh, for offering an amendment when a person um, uh, has met the call and uh, uh, submitted uh, the amendment. But I find it um, uh, passing strange um, uh, that a significant number of amendments are being offered, which to my way of thinking could only be for dilatory purposes, useless dilatory purposes, uh, as we proceed. And people like Jenny Brown Waite, uh, Mr. Cole, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Whitfield, Mr. Issa um, uh, did not uh, uh, come here and testify, and as Mr. McGovern says, it kind of signals uh, that they don't care about it. But just to carry it one step further, and ask my distinguished colleague and friend from Florida, um, does this measure as offered by Mr. Issa um, uh, impact uh, the deficit at all? Uh, I'm not aware of that, but I will say that uh, I, if, if, if uh, the gentleman will yield. Yes. Yes. Uh, I will say that with regard to uh, our uh, distinguished colleagues not having uh, present, uh, been present today to testify, perhaps they believed the speaker when she said that amendments would not be made in order. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, yep. uh, well, but, but with regard to that. Well, but that reclaiming my time, <laughs> just reclaiming my time. My friend, of course, understands that uh, this matter is being treated as a conference report, and conference reports are, are never um, uh, amended in this process. Uh, all, of, all of you um, uh, uh, very much knew that. But to demonstrate what we, Mr. McGovern and I were talking about, the simple fact that you don't know what Mr. Issa's amendment um, uh, uh, does with reference to the deficit uh, suggests to me um, uh, that you don't even know what the amendment is about that no. you are offering, and if you don't know, I don't know why you expect no. that I know. No, 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 so no. If the I gentleman would yield, if my friend will yield, if, the, if, the friend, if my friend will yield, what I am asking for, and especially since this is not a conference report, is that the ability, that the House have the ability to debate this. Obviously, I am not going to know the, uh, the intricacies of the amendment, but my friend knows that if the House is allowed uh, to consider this, the details uh, in debate will come out, and, and, and through the discussion on the floor, 
uh, obviously questions will be made and, and questions will be answered. Well, I but, had, but with, I but with, but my with time. I reclaim my time. You see, Mr. Ice, I had an opportunity to come up here and submit um, uh, uh, to this particular body so that we might, as we did with others, have a free-ranging dialogue. I've never seen anything like it. We had an economic seminar in here today uh, for all intents and purposes. He chose not to come. You are offering something that you don't know what he would have said, and you are telling me about precedent, and I'm telling you that you don't know what you are offering, and I don't know why you expect me to know. I and yield I, back the balance. And, 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 uh, Mr. Dreyer. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Let me first say, since the last statement that was made by my friend, Mr. Hastings, was the term precedent. For starters, uh, I was seeking rec recognition. The precedent is that when debating in this committee, a member of the majority is recognized and then a member of the minority is recognized. Now, both Mr. McGovern and Mr. Hastings have proceeded to imply, in the case of Mr. McGovern, and flat out state by Mr. Hastings that by virtue of not coming before this committee that these members don't care about their amendments. That's the exact term. I wrote it down as Mr. Hastings said it. He said they don't care about it by virtue of their not being here. We did have between four and five hours of debate with the chairman and the ranking members of the committees of jurisdiction. And we had much going on today. As we all know, we spent an hour on the floor with Democratic members changing their vote on the recommittal motion that was on the floor, and lots of other activities were going on. Now, Ms. Fox sat here and was the last witness, the very last witness before this committee after we went through whatever it was, eight, nine, or 10 hours. Now, I don't see her amendment having been made in order. And so if the, the fact that someone is here testifying and she very thoughtfully outlined her amendment dealing with a student loan issue and yet, unfortunately, unfortunately, it was not made in order. We know, we know that when you're given, we had 70-some-odd amendments submitted to this committee. And with members coming and going, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to mention other names, but there are other members who, as we know, wanted to testify. And this committee hearing happened to come to an end before that last member got here to testify. And who does that mean? That? Does that mean well, I don't hold the gavel? I don't hold the gavel. So what were we supposed to do, wait for them to come? To see if she showed up? Well, I mean, what I'm saying is, does that mean, uh, is the gentleman then saying, I would ask, Madam Chair, that, uh, that she doesn't care about offering her amendment? I mean, it, it is just, when we in this committee go through the laborious process that we do of trying, struggling to have the kind of freewheeling debate that was promised us and we're simply asking that amendments be made in order. Mr. diaz Bellart should not be expected to know the details of the amendment. He's simply saying, why don't we find out what the details of that amendment consist of by having a debate on the House floor so that we can hear both sides of it. When we offer these amendments, that's what we're requesting with 70 amendments that come forward because members have come to us, they have submitted these amendments to the Rules Committee and asked that they be considered but to somehow imply or flat out state that by virtue of not being in the long line when they have other things that they don't care about their amendments is, I think, absolutely outrageous. Would the gentleman yield? Of course I'm happy to yield. Yeah, well, um, uh, perhaps um, uh, your outrage is uh, uh, substantiated uh, with reference to the comment uh, 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 that I made. Uh, assume for the moment um, uh, that uh, they do care. And I accept that and uh, will offer that correction. But I'm amused, well, I thank you for that. I, I'm amused by uh, sitting here at this hour, and we did so, uh, certainly Ms. Matsui and Mr. McGovern and Ms. Slaughter and I did, many, many times. Uh, and I remember very vividly doing exactly what I just did to Lincoln. You doing to me, sitting right where Ms. Fox Well, if I could reclaim my time. If I could reclaim my time, Will the gentleman Madam let me Chair, finish? If I could reclaim my time. Well, then you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> if I could reclaim my time, and then I'll look forward to yielding after I reclaim my time, I'll Madam yield. Chair. I will yield to my friend in just a moment. I reclaim my time to say that I thought we kind of exhausted this notion of arguing years past versus the change that we were promised. 
We were promised a new direction for America, which included the work of the House Rules Committee. And I have acknowledged and admitted that when I sat in the chair where Mrs. Slaughter is, that I didn't do a perfect job. And I could have done a better job. I will acknowledge that to my friend. But the constant effort to say, well, you did this, so we should do this, is completely irrelevant because of the promise that was made to the American people and to this institution. I'm happy to further yield to my friend. Yeah, the point that I wish to make, and will, um, uh, for my friend, is I sat where Ms. Fox is, and I offered an amendment of a member uh, under the same precedent that we're following, offering amendments with people that chose, uh, for whatever reason, uh, to not come um, uh, to the Rules Committee and testify and submit themselves to questions and dialogue. And you asked me, as I did uh, uh, Mr. Uh, diaz Bilar, to explain the amendment, and I was unable to do so. Now, that's not no tit for tat. I just am saying to you uh, that it happened, and it happened uh, at a later hour, I might add. But uh, uh, I'll accept the irrelevance of it all. But what else is irrelevant is these people, uh, at the very least, uh, have not been here to the Rules Committee. And I began, and I thank the gentleman for yielding, I began by saying I wanted the American public to at least understand that this stuff isn't just made up, that these people actually filed their amendments and that they did not appear here and now they are being offered sometimes by people who don't know what's in them. Well, Madam Chair, if I could reclaim my time, if I, if I could reclaim my time, then I'd be happy to yield to my, uh, my friend. All right. I'm, if I could reclaim, are you going to call, is the gentleman's called the question, Madam Chair, so we need to vote to see if I'm going to be cut off from debate here. Mr. Crawford, we don't need to do that in the Rules Committee. Mr. Dreyer has the floor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Let me, let me simply say, and I'm responding to Mr. Hastings and Mr. McGovern, both of whom have raised this spurious charge that somehow if members don't come before this committee, that they don't care about their amendment. And I, maybe it's by implication now that Mr. Hastings has said that he did not mean to directly say that. But the point is, we would have complied, we would have complied with the direction for a new America item that said bills should be reported out before 10 p.m. if we'd simply made an open rule and order. Now, the thing that is somewhat disturbing, I think, to everyone here is that as we look down the dais to Ms. Pingree, and Mr. Polis is not here at this moment, he stepped out. These are two members of this committee who have never once from this committee had an open rule reported out. Never before in the history of our republic have we gone through a Congress where there has been not one single open rule. And every day that goes by, Madam Chair, I should say that we've set this record, never a session of Congress, that was last year, and now as we're headed towards the end of March, we are still with this perfect record of no open rules for the entire Congress. And I think that in and of itself is a very, very unfortunate thing. No further discussion. The vote will occur on the motion, Mr. Diaz-Ballard. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. no. 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 In the chair, no. Further vote, please. Record. No. Absolutely not. No. 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 Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Diaz Ballard. No, thank you, Mr. Sessions. Mr. Sessions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chairman, I have an amendment to the rule. Move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers. Amendment number 31, offered by a gentleman who was here, Representative Bullier of Indiana, and Mr. McKeon of California, which would protect the integrity and independence of the Department of Defense and the Department of Veterans Affairs Health Care Systems and state that the TRICARE program and the Veterans Health Care Program meet all the requirements for individual health insurance under the bill. Thank you, Mr. Sessions. You heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? Not the vote occurs on the motion by Mr. Sessions. All in favor say aye. Aye. No. 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 Again, the chair of the no's have it. Court vote, please. Court vote. No. Ms. Brigado. No. Oh, no, no, I said. Um, don't do that. Mr. McDonald. No. No. Mr. 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 No.
agreed to. Mr. Sessions. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Madam Chairman, I have a rule. I move the committee to make an order to provide the appropriate waivers for Amendment Number 12 offered by the gentlewoman who was in attendance today, Representative Blackburn, Tennessee, which would prohibit exchange plans from being established until the HHS Secretary certifies that the establishment of the same exchange plans will not cause the cost of the average price of private health insurance premiums to increase. Thank you, Mr. Sessions. Any discussion? Not the vote will occur on the motions by Mr. Sessions. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, no. No. Uh, the chair of the no's have it. A recorded vote, please. Recorded vote. Mr. Randolph, no. Hastings, no. Ms. Matsu, no. 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 Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chairman, I have a member to the rule. Move the committee to make an order to provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number eight offered by the gentlewoman, Representative Blackburn of Tennessee, who was in attendance today, which would provide that if the OMB submits a report saying that the cost of Title I of this bill and the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act are 25 percent or greater than the federal budget, then the Congress shall consider a joint resolution to repeal such provisions. Heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? Not the vote will occur. On the motion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The chair of the no's have it. Court vote, Court please. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Mr. Matsu. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Arturo. No. Mr. Perlman. No. Mr. Painter. No. Mr. Coles. No. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Diaz Blotter. Yes. Mr. Session. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Clerk report the total. Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Sessions. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Madam Chairman, I have a member for the rule. Move the committee to make an order to provide the appropriate rules for amendment number 106, offered by Representative Jeff Flake of Arizona, which would strike the employer mandate to provide health insurance for employees. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 Any chair of the no's have Madam Chairman, ask for a report of vote, please. Vote. No. 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 No
No. Ms. Pena? No. Holmes? No. Mr. Dry? Aye. Dean of Blair? Yes. Aye. Dr. Fox? Aye. Manager? No. Clerk report the total? Four days, nine days. Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Sessions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chairman, I have a member rule. Move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for the following amendments to be separately debated for 10 minutes each and considered. Amendment number 97, offered by Representative Heller of Nevada, which would prevent the $2,000 per employee tax from impacting employers in states where unemployment is greater than 6%. Amendment number 77, offered by the gentleman, Mr. Upton of Michigan, which would strike prohibit the employer mandate from going to effect if unemployment is over 7 percent. Amendment number 99 offered by the gentleman, Mr. Kingston of Georgia, which would suspend the employer mandate for every year that the national unemployment rate is above 9 percent. Amendment number 64 offered by the gentleman, Mr. Rogers of Michigan, which would prohibit the employer mandate from going into effect if national unemployment is over 10 and amendment number 51 offered by the gentleman Mike Rogers of Michigan, which would prohibit the employer mandate from going into effect if in a state where unemployment is over 11 percent. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Is there any discussion? Not the vote occurs on the motion of Mr. Sessions. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 Any chair, the noes have it. I ask for a code of recorded vote, vote, please. No. 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 Medicaid expansion. Heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion by Mr. Sessions. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The chair, the noes have it. Court vote, please, Court ma'am. Vote, please. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Mr. No. No. Mr. Cardozo. No. Mr. Arthur. No. Mr. Perlman. No. Mr. Tingley. No. Mr. Pulse. No. Mr. Drive. Aye. Mr. Yes. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Dr. Cronin. Aye. Mr. No, Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, we have an amendment to the rule. I move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for Amendment Number 47, offered by the gentleman, Mr. Shimkus, who was before the committee today, which would provide funds to Medicaid recipients so they can buy into employer-sponsored insurance. Heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? Not the vote occurs on the motion by Mr. Sessions. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, no. No. Any chair knows. No. Court vote, please. Court vote. Mr. McGovern. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Mr. Sponsor. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Tingley. No. Mr. Pulse. No. Mr. Drive. Aye. Mr. Yes. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Mr. Carlin. No. Mr. Tingley. No. Mr. Pulse. No. Mr. Drive. Aye. Mr. Diaz Water. Yes. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Mr. Fox. Aye. Mr. No, clerk reports the total. Four days, nine. Motion is not agreed to, Mr. Sessions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chairman, I have an amendment to the rule. I move the committee make an order to provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 30, which was represented today by the gentleman, Mr. Paulson of Minnesota, being joined by Mr. Gerlock of Pennsylvania, Mr. Lance of New Jersey, and Mr. Dent of Pennsylvania, who is also in attendance today, which would remove the medical innovative tax and replace it with unobligated stimulus funds. Heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? Not the vote occurs on the motion by Mr. Sessions. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Aye. Any chair of the no's have it? Madam Chair, may I ask for a court vote, please? Court vote, please. Mr. McGovern. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Ms. Monsu. No. Mr. Cardozo. No. Mr. Parker. No. Mr. Perlman. No. Mr. Tingers. No. Mr. Coles. No. Mr. Drive. Aye. Mr. Diaz Water. Yes. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Madam Chair. No. Clerk reports the total. 48 is 90. Motion is not agreed to, Mr. Sessions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chairman, I have a member to the rule. Move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 89, offered by the gentleman, Mr. Dent of Pennsylvania, which would add a new division titled Ending Defensive Medicine and Encouraging Innovation. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? Not the vote occurs on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. no. Any chair, the no's aye. Madam Speaker, report a vote, please. Report vote, please. 
Mr. Governor? No. Mr. Hayes? No. Mr. Ponsu? No. Mr. Cardo? No. Mr. Arcuri? No. Mr. Perlmutter? No. Mr. Cambridge? No. Mr. Bowles? No. Mr. Dry? Aye. Mr. Gisbert? Yes. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Madam Chair. No. Clerk, report the proposals. Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Sessions. Thank you, Madam uh, Chairman. Madam Chairman, have a Mr. Will move the committee to make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 83, offered by the gentleman, Mr. Shattuck of Arizona, and the gentleman, Mr. Brown of Georgia, who was here speaking on behalf of this amendment, which would add a section to establish universal access programs to improve high risk schools and Reinsurance markets. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion. Mr. Sessions, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Any chair, the noes have it. I'm sure I asked for a quarter of the place. Recorded vote, please. Mr. McDonald? No. Mr. Hastings? No. Mr. Sponsor? No. Mr. Cardinal? No. Mr. Arthur? No. Mr. Perlmutter? No. Mr. Payne? No. Mr. Paul? No. Mr. Grant? No. Mr. Hastings? Aye. No. Mr. Sessions? Aye. Dr. Fox? Aye. No. Clerk reports the totals. Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Sessions. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Madam Chairman, have amendment to the rule and move the committee to make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 46, offered by the gentleman who was in attendance today, Mr. Brown, which will provide individuals 100% deductibility for all medical expenses, reform in TALA, provide for cooperative governing of individual health insurance coverage, and provide for association health plans. You heard the motion of a gentleman from Texas, Mr. McGovern? Yeah, I don't think Mr. Brown was here. Yes, yes, Mr. Brown was here. I didn't. I didn't. When? I didn't see him. Yes, he was. You were here all day. Yeah, said, so he yeah. was here. Anyway. Any further discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion by Mr. Sessions. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Can you share the noes? Have it. Court vote, please, Madam Court Chair. Court vote. No. 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 Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Arthur. No. Mr. Perlmutter. No. Mr. Kinder. No. Mr. Falls. No. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Diaz Water. Mr. Seven. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Madam Chair. No. Clerk reports the totals. Three days, nine days. Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Sessions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chairman, I have an amendment to will move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 61, offered by the gentleman, Mr. Burgess of Texas, who is here this afternoon, most of the day, which would add a division based on the medical liability reforms adopted in the state of Texas. Thank you, Mr. Sessions. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion. Yes, Madam Chairman. Yes. The, uh, it's my understanding that by Accepting this amendment, the bill uh, related to the deficit would be reduced by CBO score of a minimum of $50 billion a year. And I think that this would be a good thing to add. We are worried uh, about the availability, all of us, I think, the availabilities of physicians who will handle the types of cases and things which they have been trained to properly provide for. As a result of the state of Texas moving forward with a state law that was very similar to California, the state of Texas, which operates a lot of medical schools, received in one year the equal number of people that were in the entire medical school, medical school system in Texas, those number of physicians who left the states which they were in and came to Texas which resulted in a, a very large opportunity for Texas to help its uninsured populations. We added physicians up and down the state, many times in rural areas, many times with physicians with high risk uh, problems. Uh, the state of Texas benefited greatly. It not only helped access, it helped uh, poor people, it helped senior citizens, it helped disabled people, and it is a wonderful, wonderful attribute and keystone product to what most health care organizations and physician organizations believe has made Texas a lot better. And I believe it would be a great thing to add to this bill medical malpractice for the tune of $50 billion a year. You've heard the gentleman's motion and discussion. Any further discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion by Mr. Sessions. All in favor say aye. 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 Those no. no. Any chair, the no's have. Madam Chairman, on behalf of the gentleman, Mr. Burgess, and myself, I would ask for a recorded vote. Recorded vote, please. Mr. 
No. 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 Colorado said malpractice since 1986. I'm going to vote no. It's a good No. Mr. No. Mr. Grimes. Aye. No, purpose for the total. Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Session. Madam Chairman, thank you so much. Madam Chairman, I have amendment for rule. Move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 69 and amendment number 80 offered by the gentleman, Mr. Ralph Hall of Texas. Amendment number 69 will require a Social Security number for eligibility for participating in an exchange. And amendment number 80 would require a valid photo ID when applying for Medicaid or S. Yeah. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion, Mr. Polis? Yeah, I'd just like to point out again, uh, there, while there, uh, much to my chagrin, there already are uh, ample requirements that prohibit uh, undocumented immigrants from purchasing insurance through the exchange. And I would point out that any requirements uh, for additional documentation or efforts to prevent undocumented immigrants uh, cost taxpayers additional money because you're forcing taxpayers to pay for illegal immigrants, and that's what the Hall Amendment would do. Yield back. Any other discussion? Madam Chair, if, if, yes, this, if this amendment were made in order, I would vote against it. Uh, uh, but um, I, uh, as strongly as I disagree with it, uh, I think that the, uh, the House uh, should have an opportunity to, to uh, voice its, uh, its will. Thank you, Mr. J.S. Ballard. Any other discussion? Well, if not, the vote occurs on the motion by Mr. Sessions. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. In chair, the no's have it. Madam Chair, report, report vote, please. No. Mr. Hayes? No. Mr. No. Mr. No. No. Mr. Here. No. Mr. No. Mr. No. Mr. No. Mr. Aye. Mr. Yes. Mr. Aye. Aye. No. Reports total. Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Sessions. Madam Chairman, thank you so much. I have an amendment through rule. I move the committee to make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 96 offered by the gentleman from Nevada, Mr. Heller, and the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Johnson, Sam Johnson, which would strike the individual mandate exception for illegal immigrants. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Is there any discussion? Mr. Paul? Yeah, well, again, they're, they're not allowed to purchase insurance through the exchange, so uh, it doesn't make any sense uh, to do both uh, here where this would presumably require them to have coverage and ban them from acquiring coverage. So it's just uh, a somewhat incoherent with the, the statute as referred by the Senate. Yield back. Mr. Thank you, Madam Chair. I agree with Mr. Polis. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, as ill-conceived as the amendment is, it's still something that should be uh, able to be uh, considered by, uh, by the House, and uh, I would vote against it. Any other discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion by Mr. Sessions. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. And chair, no. those have it. Uh, record vote, please, Ben. Recording Bennett. vote. Sure. Mr. Gunn. No. Mr. Payton. No. Mr. Matsu. No. Mr. Cargo. No. Mr. Garcia. No. Mr. Perlman. No. Mr. Andrews. No. Mr. Polis. No. Mr. Grimes. Aye. Mr. Gannon. Yes. yes. Mr. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Madam Chair. No. Motion is not agreed to. Mr. Sessions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I have a minute to rule. Move the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 14 offered by the gentleman, Mr. Stearns of Florida, which would require the co-equal heads of the three branches of government, the President, Congress, and the Supreme Court Justices, to enroll in the health exchange. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? Not. The vote occurs on the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Chair, the noes have it. Madam Chairman, I've come to the proper one now, and that is the last one, as Dr. Fox says. Madam Chairman, I have an amendment to the rule. I move that you can have it back. Uh, I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make it order and provide the appropriate waivers for the following amendments to be separately debated for 10 minutes each and considered. Amendment number 105, offered by the gentleman. Mr. Hinojosa of Texas, which would add a hold harmless amendment for those hospitals that serve high poverty areas and are subject to reductions in their Medicare and Medicaid disproportionate share hospital payments. It would require MedPAC to conduct a study that determines the continued 
Operability of hospitals in the high poverty areas, the Secretary of Health and Human Services would enact recommendations based on the study and ensure continued access to care by individuals served by such hospitals. Also, Amendment Number 92, offered by the gentlewoman uh, Jackson Lee of Texas, which would strike Medicare limits on expanding physician-owned hospitals. Amendment Number 93, offered by the gentlewoman. Representative Jackson Lee of Texas, which would provide an exception to Medicare limits on physician-owned hospitals by providing an exception for safety net hospitals that meet criteria for disproportionate share hospitals or high number of emergency room visits. Further, Amendment Number 94, offered by the gentleman Jackson Lee of Texas, which would amend the definition for high Medicaid facility. Thank you, Mr. Sessions. Any discussion, Mr. Uh, Cardoza? Yes, Madam Chair. I just wanted to make note that there are very few areas in the country, if any, that have higher poverty rates and, and challenges in their hospitals. And all of my hospitals within the confines of my district that I've been in contact with have indicated they wanted me to vote for this bill, as did the California Hospital Association. Any other discussion? Mr. Perlmutter? I would say I appreciate the amendments that uh, Ms. Jackson Lee brought you, but we're tired of some of the subject. That's all I'm saying. And the vote will occur on the motion by Mr. Sessions. All in favor say aye. 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 Those no. 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 Thank you, Chair, the no's have it. Quarter vote, please, Quarter Madam vote. Chairman. No. 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 Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 No, Clerk of Court's vote. Motion is not agreed to, Mr. Dry. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Before we uh, turn to Ms. Fox, I'd just like to say, uh, well, we've gone through an extraordinarily uh, intense 13 hours here that um, I'd like to have a light moment, if that would be possible, to say that in one hour, Mr. Sessions will be celebrating his birthday. So I wanted everyone here to know that. Thank you very much. Now we can, yes, now we can turn to Ms. Fox. Ms. Fox. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, before I offer an amendment, I would like to say that in light of the discussion on amendments that we've had tonight, I'd like to ask that the chair provide us with the number of amendments for the first session and this session so far that have been offered in person and those offered without the person testifying by majority party and minority party and the percent of each of the amendment of, of those amendments that were accepted. I'd like to see the statistics on this. When you all raise questions, I guess it's my academic background, you get me to thinking about things, and I think it might be interesting for the public and for us to see how does this work? Uh, does it make a difference to come to the Rules Committee? Uh, do more amendments of the majority party get passed by the Rules Committee? Uh, if you come in person, do more of the minority party get passed if you come in person? I think it would be kind of interesting to see that statistic. You have the records. I'm not sure we record, uh, but I, I would have to. You have, have the minutes of the meetings well, of who you showed up. I think probably you're more you aware of it. You're more aware of it today. Uh, you have, but your staff can do Will, that. Would the general lady yield to me? Um, your staff could, has access to the same records as, as any of well, us do, so that you, just, might want to, you might want to assign one of your staff members to do that. I just thought that it would be more official if it came from the chair of the committee, that it would be an official document coming from the chair of the committee. I'm not certain it's possible. Uh, we can look into it, but I think it would take a combination of staff and considerable work. How long did you want to go back? Just this, just this session. This session. But the first half of the session. Well, the first the session. session. The first session. And second of session. The term. I mean, All right. It's the 111th Congress, I should say. Let us see what's possible. Thanks. Well, that again, you've you've raised the issue tonight in terms of whether your percentages 
better or worse if you attend. It might be kind of interesting to show that to people. Madam Chair, I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number six offered by Representative Fox of North Carolina, which would strike the entire Student Aid and Fiscal Responsibility Act. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. That. You student, her Student Aid and Fiscal Responsibility Act that she testified on. To That's strike that? Amendment. You all heard the motion, Mr. Pohl? Yeah, again, I would just like to emphasize that uh, this SAFRA Act passed that both my committee as well as the House with a strong bipartisan majority. Uh, it helps make college more affordable for young people, streamlines the student loan program, and also uh, contributes to the deficit reduction that are part of this entire package uh, and, and will help reduce our federal debt going forward. Yield back. Is there any other discussion? If not, the vote. Chair, oh, I'd just Perlman. like to say, uh, there are parts, you know, had the amendment been more tailored, uh, might have been interesting to me, but it's far too broad, and as a consequence, I'm going to vote no. Any other discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion by Mrs. Fox. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Okay. We have a recorded vote, man. Recorded vote. No. 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 Aye. 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 No. Report's Motion is not agreed to. Ms. Fox. Madam Chair, I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order <laughs> and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 98, offered by Representative Brown of Georgia, Franks of Arizona, and Sam Johnson of Texas, which would provide that nothing in the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act or this act may authorize or permit access to or coverage of abortions, except in the case of a woman who suffers a physical disorder, physical injury, or physical illness that would, as certified by a physician, place the woman in danger of death unless an abortion is formed or it performed, or if the pregnancy is the result of an act of forcible rape or incest. You've heard motion. Any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. The chair of the no's have it. Could we have a recorded vote? Recorded vote. No. 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 No and provide the appropriate waivers for Amendment Number 67, offered by Representative Brownway to Florida, which would repeal the sections of the bill that require the IRS to enforce the individual mandate. You've heard General Lady's motion. Any discussion? If not, the motion. The vote occurs on the motion by Mrs. Fox. All in favor say aye. 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 No. No. Do you chair the no's have it? Please Madam Chair, could we have a recorded vote? I forgot. No. <clears throat> No. 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 Madam Chair, I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for Amendment Number 13 offered by Representative Blackburn of Tennessee, which would prohibit the federal government from passing any law that would give it authority to ration health care for the American people. You've heard the general lady's motion. Is there any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Those no. 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 And again, the chair, the no's have it. A recorded, recorded vote, vote, please, vote. Madam Chair. Mr. McGovern. No. Tracy. No. Tracy. No. Tracy. No. Tracy. No. 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 Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 No. Motion is not agreed to. Mrs. Fox. Madam Chair, I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 90 offered by Representative Roscom of Illinois, which would strike the current section 1302 essential health benefits requirements and replace it with a new section Medicare Waste, Fraud, and Abuse Prevention Pilot Program. You've heard the gentleman's lady's motion. Any discussion? 
Not the vote of courage on the motion by Ms. Fox. All in favor say aye. 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 There's no. No. Uh, the game the chair, the no's have it. A recorded vote, please. Recording chair. No. 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 Madam Chair, an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 101 offered by Representative Kingston of Georgia, which would suspend new taxes unless Medicare fraud is below 1%. You heard the gentlelady's motion. Any discussion? <clears throat> and if not, uh, we'll vote on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Any chair, no have it. Do we have a recorded vote? Recorded vote. No. 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 No which would create a three-year slash five-state medical tribunal pilot program to be administered by the Secretary of HHS. You've heard the gentlelady's motion. Any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. No. The chair of the no's have it. Could we have a recorded vote? Recorded vote. vote. No. 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 Opposed? No. Mr. Dryer. Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 No. Clerk report the total. Motion is not Madam Chair, I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 44 offered by Representative Rowe of Tennessee, which would repeal the enactment of the Independent Medicare Advisory Board. You've heard the gentlelady's motion. Any discussion? Not the vote occurs on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 Chair, the no's have it. Could we have a recorded vote? Recorded vote. No. Mr. Governor. No. Mr. Hayes. 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 No. Mr. No. Mr. Dryer. Aye. Mr. Hayes. Yes. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. No. Correct for the court's approval. Court A's. Nine A's. Which is not agreed to. Madam Chair, I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 29 offered by Representative Gingrey of Georgia, which would state that nothing in the legislation shall be construed to allow any federal employee or political appointee to dictate how a medical provider practices medicine. Present the gentlelady's motion. Any discussion? Not the vote occurs on the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Any chair, the no's have it. Could we have a recorded vote? Recorded vote, please. No. 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 Madam Chair, I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 17 offered by Representative Stearns of Florida, which would require that any written visual or audio materials distributed through a covered official entity or program shall be in English only. Shall be in English only. You've heard the gentlelady's motion. Any discussion? That's really, Madam Chair. <laughs> That's stretching me. <laughs> That's stretching me. <laughs> you wouldn't understand, is that right? That, uh, I, I uh, vehemently would oppose that amendment on the floor. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and it really makes absolutely no sense. But um, uh, since I uh, follow the, the philosophy uh, of uh, uh, allowing, uh, supporting allowing uh, the entire house to work its will uh, I will even uh, vote for something as absurd as this <laughs> <coughs> to be made uh, in order. Will the gentleman yield? Yes. I, I thank my friend for yielding and I think he makes a very important point. It's easy to laugh at the notion of someone 
uh, saying that they brilliantly oppose an amendment and still believing that the idea of allowing the House to have a debate on what he believes to be a stupid idea is there. And uh, I will say that um, we were in the majority. I often supported making in order amendments, which I totally disagreed. And so uh, I think that this is a very, very clear position that the gentleman has because he supports the notion of openness and transparency. And uh, I believe that he's absolutely right to say that he opposes the amendment but supports the member's right to be heard on the amendment. And I thank my friend for yielding. Thank you. Mr. Collins, did you? All right. No other discussion. The vote will occur on the uh, amendment by Mrs. or the motion, rather, by Mrs. Fox. All in favor will say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Aye. Okay, the chair, the no's have it. A recorded Roll vote, aye. please. is not agreed to. Further motions, Mrs. Fox. Madam Chair, I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number 22 and amendment number 23 offered by Representative Sullivan of Oklahoma. Amendment number 22 would require the HHS secretary to conduct a study on new and old programs affected by this legislation to determine if there's any program duplication, write a report on the study within one year of the enactment of this bill, and after writing that report, the secretary would be required to eliminate any duplicative programs within one year. Amendment number 23 would require the HHS secretary to conduct a study on new and old grant programs affected by this legislation to determine if there is any program duplication, write a report on the study within one year of the enactment of this bill. And after writing that report, the secretary would be required to eliminate any duplicative programs within one year. You've heard the gentlelady's motion. Is there any discussion on it? If not, the vote will occur on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Can you chair the no's have it? Madam Chair, could we have Recorded? a recorded vote? No. No. Mr. Hayes? No. 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 Aye. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for substitute amendment number 21 offered by Representative Terry, Terry of Nebraska, which would establish the Citizens Congressional Health Benefits Program. <coughs> You've heard the gentlelady's motion. Is there any discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Can you chair the no's have it? Could we have a recorded vote? Recorded vote. Mr. McDonald? No. Mr. Hayes? No. Mr. Matsu? No. Mr. Cardo? No. Mr. Archer? No. Mr. Perlma? No. Mr. Ingrid? No. Mr. Paul? No. Mr. Drive? Aye. Mr. Daniel Water? Yes. Mr. Sessions? Aye. Mr. Dr. Fox? Aye. Mr. No. The motion is not agreed to. Mr. Fox? Thank you, Madam Chair. I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number four, offered by Representative Blackburn of Tennessee, which would require the HHS secretary to certify that no American will lose access to his or her current health insurance due to the establishment and operation of health plans offered through a state exchange. This will be an annual certification. Until certification is made, no state is required or penalized for the failure to establish plans in an exchange. You've heard the general lady's motion. Any discussion? If not, the vote will occur on the motion by Mrs. Fox. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Can you chair the no's have it? Do we have a recorded roll vote, Madam Chair? Please. Mr. McGovern. No. Mr. Hayes. No. Mr. Matsu. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Archery. No. Mr. Perlmutter. No. Mr. Pinger. No. Mr. Collis. No. Mr. Paulus. No. Mr. Drive. Aye. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number seven offered by Representative Blackburn of Tennessee, 
which would provide that nothing in the act shall preclude an individual from purchasing or maintaining insurance qualifying for health savings account deposits and nothing shall interfere with their ability to continue to make deposits according to the schedule created in the 2006 HSA legislation. You've heard the gentlelady's motion. Any discussion? Any questions? If not, the vote occurs on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. The chair, the noes have it. Did we have a recorded vote? vote? Mr. Governor, no. Mr. Hayden, no. No. Carter, no. Mr. Archer, no. No. Aye. 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 No. Amendment number 63 would ensure proportional representation of interest of rural areas on independent Medicare advisory boards. And, independent, and amendment number 71 would ensure that MedPAC has adequate rural representation. You've heard the gentlelady's motion. Is there any discussion? Mr. Cardoza. Any other discussion? Not the vote occurs on the motion. Ms. Fox, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. No. No. Again, chair, the nose have it. Record A recorded vote, vote, please, Madam Chair. Mr. McDonough. No. Mr. Hayes. No. Ms. Matsu. No. Mr. Cardo. No. Mr. Herrick. No. Mr. Crawler. No. Mr. Tanger. No. Mr. Paulson. No. Mr. Drive. Aye. Motion is not agreed to. Now, Madam Chair, before I have one more amendment, but before I do that, I would like to uh, put into the record an article um, dated December 23rd, 2009, by the chairwoman called The Democrats' View from the House Senate Bill Isn't Health Reform. I'd, I'd like to enter this into the record. Without objection. And you have another amendment? I do. Madam Chair, I have an amendment to the rule. I move that the committee make an order and provide the appropriate waivers for amendment number nine and number 10 offered by Representative Moore of Wisconsin, which would change the date when insurers would need to comply with the new medical loss ratio requirements from 2011 to 2014 to conform to when the American health benefits exchanges will be established. You've heard the lady's motion. Any discussion? Not the vote occurs on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. The motion so we have a recorded vote, Madam recorded Chair. Vote. No. No. Me. No. Ms. Matsui. No. Ms. Cardo. No. Mr. Archer. No. Ms. Perlmutter. No. Ms. Cambridge. No. Mr. Paulus. No. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Ms. Diaz-Lawyer. Yes. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Dr. Fox. Aye. Madam No. Court reports total. Four yeas, nine yeas. Motion is not agreed to. Madam Chair. Mr. Dreyer. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Let me just say that we've uh, gone through and dispensed with the uh, amendments that had been submitted by both Democrats and Republicans to this committee. Uh, it was 13 hours and 20 minutes ago that we uh, began this hearing. We considered what, how many amendments you're counting them up there, About 70 amendments or so. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that uh, Tomorrow is going to be a very, very interesting day for this institution, and I know that there are a lot of people who believe that what we're going to be doing if we see the House of Representatives pass this measure is move towards uh, something that they believe to be the right thing. Uh, I am very, very troubled, as I know my uh, other colleagues uh, in the minority on this committee are, are concerned about the direction in which we are moving. We all we all very much want to ensure that every American has access to quality, affordable health insurance. But the notion of expanding the size and scope and reach of government, as uh, we may be poised to do, is extraordinarily troubling. And so I'm going to urge my colleagues, as we move towards the motion that is coming before us, to vote no so that we can get back and have a rule that would allow for a free-flowing debate 
and the kind of legislation that I believe will go a long way towards addressing the goal that we all share. Mr. McGowan? I, I just want to take this moment to, to thank the Chairwoman for her leadership of this committee during this, um, during this long um, debate and, um, and, and markup. And, um, you know, I was a history major in college, and this is one of these moments that uh, when you look back, I think we're going to look back with great pride. You look back at the debate on Social Security and on Medicare, uh, the same kind of opposition exactly. was, was, uh, was made. And um, I think uh, when we look back on those things, that I think we were glad that the members of Congress and the President had the guts to actually move forward on this. And I think this is one of those moments. And, and I, I, I wish, um, you know, I think we all wish that, uh, the, um, that there was some on the other side wouldn't have thrown so many roadblocks in the way so we could have actually done this in a conference. But look, you know, th th we need to do this. We've been trying to do it for decades. And I think we're about to uh, make history tomorrow, and I want to thank the chairwoman and all the members of the committee and the staff, you know, for their uh, for their uh, for their patience. And I look forward to uh, to, to tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, this will be now that we've ended the amendments. Let me first uh, wish happy birthday to Mr. Sessions. I want to thank we're not going to stay until his birthday uh, for their incredible <laughs> patience. You've been with us all day, and we thank you for that. We thank all the press that's covered us. Uh, and I want to say that uh, I'm so happy to be here at this time. Uh, I went through the Clinton health care plan. It was really tragic. We did not pass it. We would have been so much better off now in so many ways. I think numbers of people, even the 45,000 die a year now with no health insurance, that alone might not have happened. But tomorrow, I have the great honor of reading from Franklin Roosevelt's speech on health care gotten the copy from the National Archives. It was typed on the White House typewriter and has some of his notes, handwritten notes, on the sheet. Uh, this, of course, is a duplicate. The original will go to Hyde Park. But I'm so pleased just looking at it. Uh, brings back wonderful memories of a man who had the courage of his convictions and put this country back on its feet. Uh, so I thank everybody here. I look forward to it. And I can't help but think of all the stories we've heard today of people who are suffering out there and who have nobody else to count on but us. And tomorrow, I ask that every man and woman in the House of Representatives do his and her duty. The last vote will be on a motion by Mr. McGovern. Vote by Mr. McGovern. On favor, say aye. Aye. <laughs> Foes, no. 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 All right. In the we have a record opinion vote, of the chair. chair. All right. Let's have a record vote. Mr. McGovern. Aye. Mr. Hayden. Aye. Mr. Monsoon. Aye. Cardo. Aye. Mr. Archer. No. Mr. Perlman. Aye. Mr. Fingers. Yes. Mr. Cole. Yes. Mr. Drive. Aye. Or excuse me, no. <laughs> <laughs> You were right the first time, Mr. Drew. Mr. Neal Blood. No. Mr. Session. No. Dr. Fox. No. Adam Chair. Yes. Um, clerk, report the totals. Eight days, five days. And this is agreed to, and I'm so happy about it. I look forward to tomorrow. Tonight, we have voted 80 amendments. I don't know if that's a record or not, but while we're checking on what Mrs. Fox requests, maybe we can find that. I will be carrying this for the majority tomorrow. And I will look forward to managing for the Republicans. Thank you all very much. The News Committee is now adjourned.
Well, the House Rules Committee has wrapped up their deliberation on amendments to the health care bill. You can watch the House live on C-SPAN as they continue deliberations and votes on health care tomorrow with live coverage beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern. We now return to our Book TV program. We, oui, what's this we? Oui? Historian Andrew Lewis presents a history of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, better known as SNCC. Key members included Julian Bond, John Lewis, and Matt.